So, um, our fifth and, um, in this case, final uh, presentation this afternoon is from our UK, a UK finalist from 2012. Lucy Thorne has a admittedly slightly unusual love of viruses. It was realised at Oxford, nurtured at Imperial College, and fully developed by the time she was researching uh, your good friend and mine, the, the norovirus, the winter vomiting bug, at Cambridge. Uh, she's recently been involved with an Ebola research project in Sierra Leone and, recognising how wonderful FameLab is, has delayed taking up her new role uh, researching HIV at um, University College London in order to be here today. So here, perhaps to tell us what she has against some of the less exotic viruses, is Lucy Thorne. such thing as a good virus. Now this might seem like a strange thing to ask. When we think of viruses, we tend to think of the big baddies, flu, HIV, Ebola, all incredibly good at spreading disease. Even Hollywood has cottoned on to our fear of viruses, casting them as fast-spreading deadly villains that often turn the world into zombies. But what if we could use viruses to treat diseases like cancer? This idea has been around for about a century and it's based on a natural phenomenon. Doctors treating children with cancer noticed that some who got a measles virus infection had a spontaneous reduction in their tumours. It turns out that the measles virus prefers to grow in tumour cells as they're reprogrammed to grow uncontrollably and this is exactly what the virus wants to do so it can really thrive in them. The beauty of this is that when the virus has grown enough, it sets off small explosions in the cell to burst the cell open. This kills it, and it allows the virus to escape and spread through the tumour. We've known about this for a long time, but what's exciting is that we now have the tools, the technology, and the knowledge to turn it into a therapy. We know a lot more about how viruses work, so we can modify them to ensure that they will only infect cancer cells and not healthy cells to prevent any bad side effects. For a virus to get into a cell in our body, it uses a key on its surface. It's cleverly evolved this key to fit a lock on the surface of our cells. And when the key fits the lock, it opens a doorway for the virus into the cell. We also know now that when a cell becomes cancerous, often it changes its locks. So we can modify the virus key so that it will only open the locks on cancer cells, allowing it to invade like a well-targeted SWAT team. Once inside, the SWAT team can call for backup and it helps to recruit the patient's own immune system as a second line of attack against the tumour. As the infected cells burst, they release their contents alongside danger signals. And together, these activate the immune system and they teach it to recognise the tumour cells as a threat, even if they're not infected. And the result is a wave of cancer-killing effects. Over recent years, scientists have been staging all kinds of virus versus cancer battles, trying to match up the right ones. But there have been some really exciting results from clinical trials. So if this therapy works, those villainous viruses could be the good guys in disguise. Thank you. Thank you very much. So to our judges for the fifth time. Who wants to kick off? Chess. That was fabulous. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask a very simple question? Where did you learn your communication skills? <laughs> Probably through boring my friends for a long time. <laughs> but no, and FameLab. And FameLab. Sorry, FameLab. <laughs> um, no, I actually entered FameLab as a way to improve it. And it was because, so in my academic research, I'd done a couple of quite shaky talks. And it's something that I realised was so important, not just in the academic world, but be able to talk to people. So... I launched into FameLab not quite realising what would come from it, which has been brilliant ever since. So. Yeah, you did explain a, a, another a complex uh, concept very, very, very clearly. Uh, you, you also said uh, the role, uh, talking about the role of the immune system 
in uh, actually cleaning the, the, the tumor cells up as well. What about the role of the immune system in attacking the virus that you want? To, uh, just to the very uh, <laughs> of the field. Um, and I think the answer is that that is a problem and it's a balance and it's something that I don't think is fully worked out. So obviously you want the immune system to uh, clear the tumour, so the response needs to be tumour specific. And if it shuts down the virus too quickly, you're, the virus won't have its full effects and you also won't, won't get to the point where you generate the tumour specific immunity. So there's definitely a balance um, and it seems to be dependent what I said about trying to get the right match, um, it seems to be dependent on the balance between the right virus and the right cancer and how that interacts with the immune system. So I think largely it's observational and the actual mechanisms are still being really worked out. Following on from that question, how do you know what you've done? So this isn't, I guess, something that I specifically work on. It's, it's not quite my research. But the, I guess the question is, how do you know that it's working, is it? Yeah, so the... Yeah. So the, a lot of this is obviously done in the lab where you're just, you have your cells in a dish and you put your virus on and you watch whether the cells are destroyed. But the more convincing results recently, there's just been a huge um, phase three clinical trial where they used... It was actually a herpes virus, um, as someone Quentin was talking about earlier, um, against um, advanced melanoma. And they saw a pr a r an improved response um, in, I guess, the cancer, the size of the tumours. Um, it was long-term, and they didn't report any bad side effects. So the clinical trials are beginning to kick in now. If, if it was a tumour in the brain, would it get over the blood-brain barrier? as well so um, most viruses don't cross the blood brain barrier but there are some that do so there's one that has is in trials that does cross the blood brain barrier um, and the obvious thing then is that you want it to safe so for a lot of these you're automatically making them more safe by targeting them straight to the tumor cells and not to the normal cells that they would infect but there are other ways that you can add in a safety catch, if you like, so you will stop it replicating and being able to grow in cells that are healthy and only allow it to grow in cells that are cancerous. So it's, I hope, it's getting quite exciting. Very <laughs> yeah, it is hopeful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much.